not, it's not where I want it, but it is what it is. So I am super excited to be here with you guys. I hope you're all having a fantastic week. Um, I'm having a pretty good week. I can't lie. Um, I've got some really cute projects for you guys this evening. So I hope that you are going to love them. Um, what else? It's been super nice here. We've had no bad weather. We keep having winter storm warnings and we get about this much snow. Just a teeny, teeny, tiny little bit. Oops. That is my iPad finally picking me up. And uh, so you'd hear me twice and that's not what I don't think anybody wants to have happen. So we're not going to do that. Uh, let's see. We've already got some comments. Hello to all of you guys from all over the place. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I know we're going to have some fun and I'm sure there'll be some laughs because there always is when we're stamping together. And um, yeah, so I'm trying to think. I really don't have any stories. I say that every week and then something comes to my brain and I think, oh yeah, I do have a story, don't I? Um, I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. We'll find out. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Um, yeah. So uh, my son and I are still watching that show Lost in Space. We have two episodes left, I think. Yeah, so don't spoil it for me. Nobody tell me what happens. Last week, some of you said the ending was not so good, so I don't want to know what it is. Um, so we are, it takes us a long time because he really can only watch TV with me on Wednesdays. Um, and so we've been watching, you know, one, two or three episodes, depending on how much time he has um, on those Wednesdays. And of course, I mean, I have to work too, so yeah. But um, I'm leaving my Wednesdays open so that I can watch TV with him. Because it's pretty rare that he wants to hang out with me as an 18-year-old man boy, I guess. Um, I'm sure he thinks he's a man, but to me, he'll always be my little boy. Um, no matter how old or how big he gets, even though he's already like 6'3". So, um, yeah. Doesn't matter. He'll always be my little boy. Um, what else? What else? What else? Gosh, I... The that's about it. I always want to give people a little time to get on and give uh, YouTube a little time to notify people that, hey, Barb's on if you want to go check her out, which of course, why wouldn't you? Um, or, you know, if you are following my Facebook page, uh, my Barb Stamps, um, what is it? Facebook.com slash Stampin' is my job, is my Facebook page, my business page. And I do post the link to this video every week over there on uh, Thursday, once in the morning and once right before I go live. So if you're ever uh, wondering how to find me, uh, or you can just come here to YouTube to my channel. Uh, my channel is just Barb Stamps, so it's pretty easy to find me. And um, yeah, and I'm looking around. I just cut something on my paper cutter that I wanted to share with you, and now I don't... Oh, okay, here it is. <laughs> I was having fits with my printer before I went live. I was trying to print something in color, and first of all, one of my ink colors was out. And then another ink color was getting low. So I changed the one that was out. But I forgot to pull the little stupid tab off the side before I stuck it in. And I didn't know it. And then I went to print again. And then it said, oh, now your other color of ink is out. I'm thinking, good grief, what's going on here? So then I remembered, oh my gosh, I didn't pull the tab off the other color that I just changed. So I quickly pulled the tabs off, put them all back in. And then it still would not, it's printing like crap. So then I did a nozzle check kind of thing. And of course the nozzle check came out crappy. And so then I did a head cleaning. So it all took way too much time and I didn't get a chance to print the thing that I wanted to print, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. I saw somebody, Becky said she's recovering from COVID. Oh my gosh, Becky, I am so sorry to hear that. I had COVID back in August. And let me just tell you, I was miserable for two weeks. I literally, okay, I shouldn't say literally because this is a little drastic and extreme, but for those two weeks, probably in the middle of those two weeks, like the first few days, it wasn't horrible and then it was awful. Actually, it was awful till the end because I, anyways, I would wake up in the morning <laughs> and think to myself, oh, great, I'm not dead. I get to live through this crap another day. So I know that's drastic and extreme, but I just felt so awful and I was, I, I couldn't eat. My husband ended up getting pneumonia. I could not eat food. I was so nauseous the entire time. I mean, I knew that you, I know you have to eat and you have to drink to survive. I know this. 
And so I would try, you know, I would try to take little sips of water. I tried to drink some Sprite or some Seven Up. I tried to drink Jello water. I tried to drink like Gatorade and Pedialyte. And, you know, I tried to eat applesauce and just whatever I could think of that might sound good. And everything was horrible. And I did not, I couldn't eat. And I lost about 17 pounds in those two weeks. Finally went to the doctor, got some medication for the nausea, and then I started feeling a lot better. So anyways, Becky, I am really sorry to hear that because COVID is no joke. Okay. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and flip the camera because we have a fair number of people, at least a fair number of people for me watching us. If you guys wouldn't mind giving the video a thumbs up. I mean, I realize you haven't seen anything yet, but I promise you the projects are amazing. So you're going to want to. Um, also, if you wouldn't mind sharing it, I think there's a little share button, which I believe you can share it to like Facebook or something else. Um, and also, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I believe the little subscribe button is right down here. Um, and then there's like a little notification bell. If you click on that, then no, YouTube is supposed to, supposed to notify you when I upload new videos or when I'm going live. Um, if you click that bell, that means you're requesting notifications uh, from my channel. Uh, so that'd be awesome if you wanted to do that too. So, okay. Uh, let's see. I need to look through the comments real quick just to make sure nobody's had any pressing questions because you just never know. Um, I'm happy to answer questions if you guys have them. Um, I don't think that I see any. I see a lot of you saying hi. We've got a ton of people on here. So thank you guys so much for coming and stamping with me tonight. I really appreciate that. Um, oh, Debbie Potts, so sweet. She says, all your projects are always worth a thumbs up. <laughs> now the pressure's on, right? Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to show you what I did last week in case you're interested. In case you didn't see me last week, you can then go watch the video from last week um, to check those projects out. And I've got a couple things to discuss. Nothing super exciting, but you know, kind of. Okay, so I like to put my hand in front of this because I have to go through this rigmarole of switching all this. And then I have to hit this button like two or three times to get the dumb thing to actually switch the view from my ceiling to my table which I don't understand that. Well, I guess I do. I think I've mentioned this before. My phone is pretty old. And so um, that's a problem. All right, we have, it's pretty off kilter right now. So we are going to try to fix that. I took my pop socket off, so we're good there. I th somebody asked me what a pop socket was on one of my videos and um, I, I don't have my phone here to show you what it does, but it's this little disc and it pops out like a, what do you call that? Whatever that's called, it pops out and then you can hold your phone with it. It makes it very easy to operate your phone with one hand and then it folds pretty flat so it doesn't get hooked on my purse or in my pocket or anything like that. So that's what a pop socket is and I'm kind of a... Uh, a pop socket lover and I have about six of them which I'm sure is not anywhere near the number that some people have but anyway um yeah pop sockets are really cool and I cannot run my phone without it so there you go all right so I was trying to print a fun pretty graphic to let you guys know that I am putting together my tutorial library I have been doing lots of classes and things over the years and I have PDF tutorials available for all the classes that I've done in the past. And so I'm getting my library prepared. So I already have about, there's got to be over 20, maybe 25 on there so far today. I am going to keep adding more. I have a lot more to add. It's just a little bit of a time consuming process. I have to create the graphic. I have to get a link from PayPal and the whole thing. So yeah, just keep checking back. Um, you know, every, I guess like few days or every week or something like that. And I'll keep adding more to it, but it's, uh, this is the, where you can find it. The link is in the description of this video. If you don't want to type all this blah, blah into your, um, address bar, you can just click on the link in this video. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, it's this HTTPS colon backslash backslash tiny URL, com slash Barb's tutorial library. Uh, so I do have a specific little, um, website for that. So yeah, if you guys want to check that out and you can see all the classes that I have uh, that you can uh, purchase uh, the online files for, that'd be awesome. Okay. I wanted to talk about this. We have uh, an amazing promotion starting next week, February 1st. It's called All Together. And there are some exclusive products in here, as well as some products that are going to be available in our following catalog that comes out in May. So the All Together collection 
is a stamp set, a set of dies, um, some designer series paper, and I'm going to use that today, so I'm going to show you those patterns, and then a collection of um, natural tones stampin' blends. So there are 10 natural tones. There is a light, a medium light, a medium, a medium deep, and a deep. And these are going to be great for, you know, coloring people, coloring animals, coloring, you know, foliage in nature. Like if you had a tree trunk or something like that, you needed to color. These are going to be perfect for you. Um, starting February 1st, you can order the entire collection of markers with one item code which is 160940 um, after that. And they're all available as a two pack also. Now these aren't like, um, they're not a light and a dark of the same shade. It's like each, like the light has a red tone and a yellow tone, like undertones, I think is what they call them. And then the medium light has a, uh, a yellow undertone and a red undertone and same all the way through. So it's not like a light and a dark, like when we have our, say our misty moonlight, or we have a light misty moonlight and a dark misty moonlight. That's not how these are sold. Um, they are sold in the undertones of the color. So like I said, you can buy them individually, two packs. You can buy the two pack of light, the two pack of medium light, and so on. Or you can get the whole collection. During this promotion, this item code for the entire collection is valid, but when the new catalog starts, it's only going to be the two packs that are available. The designer series paper, the stamp set here together, and the here for you dies are all only going to be available while supplies last or through May 2nd, I believe. Yep, May 2nd. So just so you are aware of that. Now, Stamp It Up does have a downloadable chart that you can play around with to mix these tones together. And now I did my chart. I'm not super happy with it. Um, I have seen another chart that I liked a little bit better. So I may download this again. I printed it out on basic white cardstock and then I just, so these blends are, um, they're numbered. They're not like a color. So this one is number 900. This one is number 1000. And so 1000 is a really uh, kind of blush color. And then 900 is a little bit um, so you can see this has a red undertone. This one has a yellow undertone and it does that all the way across. So I'm going to make a new chart, but this is going to be a chart that I will put on my blog that you guys can also download if you want so that you can blend all these colors together and see what different kind of tones and shades that you can get. Um, you'll have to create it yourself. Obviously I'm, I can't do this for everyone. That would take me literally hours upon hours and days and weeks and months. I don't have that kind of time, but, um, I will download it for you or I will put it on my blog so you can download it. I'll probably have it in the link of one of these videos here sooner or later and so yeah so this is my chart like I said not super happy with it I'm going to probably redo it but it's a good starting point to give me an idea of what those colors are going to look like all right um, I think I have four of these make and take packets left from our um, catalog kickoff you can see a little snippet of all of the uh, nine projects that are included in the kit so you get the pre-cut cardstock to make all these projects you get the designer series papers that you'll need to cut yourself. Um, you'll get the ribbons. You'll get the gems. You'll get the masks. Um, everything's in there to help you make these. And then I will send you a PDF file with photos, dimensions, and links to the videos where you can uh, find those. So um, I do have a few of these left. I'm pretty sure the link's in the description of this video. So if you want to purchase one, please do. Okay. Uh, my Slim Sayings class is live and going. I've sent out my first round of packets. So if you are interested in getting a packet of Slimline, my Slimline class, this is a Slimline card in case some of you are not aware what that is. It's a long, tall card, kind of like a business envelope size. And so we have six of the cards in the class are the Slimline or Slim cards. And then three of them are just standard size cards using the uh, supplies that were that we're using in the class. So anyways, I do have some of those still available. I didn't get rid of all of them. Um, I always make extras in case, you know, I talk about it and people want to get some. So link in the description, my artfully composed, I have to tell you, this has been my most favorite class for a long time. I loved, loved, loved creating the projects for this class. You guys, there are eight regular size cards. Plus you get a mini paper pumpkin box and four note cards that you'll decorate to stick in there. So it's a pretty good class. Um, you can get the bundle and the kit for $111.25 or just the kit for $45 if you've already got your own bundle. It does come with the designer series paper. It comes with the vellum. It comes with four different kinds of ribbon, uh, two different embellishments. Um, like I said, the paper pumpkin box and the note cards and envelopes. So it does have a lot of stuff in there for $45. Still have some of my iconic Sunny Sentiments kits. Still have some Borders and Bloom kits. And as you guys know, I always have to talk about Stamp Happy Academy. 
because it is my baby. It's my passion. I love it. Um, we just have so much fun uh, with this website and I hope you guys that are subscribers, members are enjoying it. I know a lot of you will comment and say how amazing it is. In fact, if Janice is on here, she'll tell you it's a gift you give yourself and she's not wrong. Um, it's amazing. If you're interested in hearing a little bit more about it, there is a link to, to, a, to an open house um, on our Facebook page that's in the description of this video. So you can click on that link. It'll take you to the Facebook page and then you can watch the videos and uh, find out for yourself how amazing it actually is. And then you can subscribe if you so desire. So there you go. And finally, I always have adhesive kits. They come in these super cute packages. This is a blue one. I've also got, um, well, I have green, yellow, red, purple, black, and blue, I think. Oh, Joanne. Yes, you did, Joanne. And I hope you're enjoying it. So this is what you get in an adhesive kit. You get these three items, uh, the clear ruler, the adhesive eraser, the ink eraser, and then you get a bunch of different adhesives that Stampin' Up! carries, the glue dots, the dimensionals, the tear and tape, the stamp and seal, and a liquid glue. So those are available all the time. The link is in the description of this video. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to message me, Barb. Where's my email address? Barb at barbstamps.com. All of a sudden I lost my head. Uh, these are the projects I made for you last week. So if you were not here and you want to go back and watch them, uh, here is the slimline card that I made. I also made, I can't remember which ones of the which one of these I made, but I mean they're the same. They are like uh, some twisty easel cards using that adorable ladybug set based off of a swap card that I made here last month. And then I changed it into this fun easel, Twisted Easel card. And then I also made this cute um, rainbow card using the amazing um, Sunshine and Rainbows designer series paper that you can get for free during Celebration, in case you did not know, Celebration is going on right now. And for every $50 you spend, you can choose something free. And if you spend $100, there's a couple items that you can you choose for free. And I'm going to be using both of those today, so I will talk about that. And lastly, if you are buying Stampin' Up! supplies and you're not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you honestly should be. Um, if you are... You should sign up and I would be happy to have you on my team. I would be honored if you chose me to be your team leader. Um, I do have a lot of fun with my team. We have got a Facebook group. We do team meetings. We do swaps. We do card challenges. We have, um, you get a free basic membership to Stamp Happy Academy once you've placed your first order as a demonstrator on my team um, in my levels one through three. You get that for free. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff we offer. We have a demonstrator 101 training call every week where we talk all kinds of stuff from current promotions, how to edit and resize photos, how to create a blog, you know, how to make a Facebook page, what to post on a Facebook page. We have a ton of uh, videos on our Demonstrator 101 training page that is for our teams. And yeah, so all of that is for you if you want to join with me, and I would love that. So um, the link, of course, to join is in the description of this video. If you have any questions at all about being a demonstrator um, or me or anything that I may offer, please let me know. I am happy to answer them. And finally, I made these little things. Here's my dimensions of my designer series paper, six and three quarters, six and a half. You wrap it around, and this is what is in here. It is a Lint Lindor Strawberry Truffles. And so it will just uh, seal up really nicely there. And here's another one in a different pattern. So I hope you guys enjoyed those projects last week. I had a ton of fun last week hanging out with you guys making those. So, all right, let me get a bucket. And we will get started here on card number one. I'm going to use the Sunshine and Rainbows paper again because I can't get enough of it. It's so cute. The patterns are so bright, so fun. Even though it hasn't been super crappy here as far as winter goes, it's not spring. And I want it to be spring. So, however, I shouldn't say that too quickly because we need the moisture. If we don't have some snow... We're not going to have snow in the mountains. It's not going to melt and run off. And then farmers aren't going to have water for irrigating. So ugh, we do need some snow, um, even though I would like it to be spring. So I'm going to use this paper again. You're probably sick of it, but I'm sorry. It's amazing and I have to keep using it. Okay. We're also going to use the stamp set. And I've got some pre-cut items here already. 
So here is some of my pre-cut stuff I have. This was a five and a half by eight and a half. And where did you get the lender? I got them at Walmart, Margaret. That's where I got them. Um, so they were like $2.48, super inexpensive. Um, yeah, just a ton of fun. So this is a uh, Misty Moonlight and I folded it in half and then I placed that really long rainbow border die on it. And then I ran it through my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine to get this amazing edge pattern here. And then I have a four by five inch piece of white that I have uh, to slide in as a, a little pullout for this pocket, okay? Then I also have here, I need to make some room. I have this piece of the designer series paper. I love this so much. And it is, it's about two and three eighths by five and a quarter is what it turns out to be. And so I'm gonna add that to the front here, but not before I put on this little strip of magenta. What do you do if your dies are not cutting out properly and are brand new from Stampin' Up? Well, there's a lot of different things. It can depend on what kind of machine you're using, uh, how your plates are, if they're warped or anything like that. Um, if they're worn out, uh, what kind of paper you're using. It could be a lot of different things and they could be defective. So if you um, have tried a bunch of things and nothing's working, I would either contact Stampin' Up directly or I'd contact the d demonstrator that you work with and they can take care of that for you. Okay, so I'm gonna add this little strip of, uh, this is Magenta Madness. It's about three eighths by uh, five and a quarter. And I am gonna add this here. And my cardstock ends up, yep, that's just one of those things you cannot get away with unless you use a brand new plate every single time. And a lot of times what I will do is I will have one plate that I dedicate to being my top plate and I don't cut on that. What is with my glue? I won't cut on that. So um, that way it always stays nice and pretty and that way I won't get um, marks at least on the top of my card, on my piece of cardstock. The bottom still will be, but that's always to the back, so I don't care about that. So if that really bothers you, just always have a nice brand new plate that you use on the top and don't use it to cut on. That will solve your problem. Okay. So I'm trying to butt this right up to the edge here. And I'm going to snip off that excess there. I knew I was going to have a little bit of excess. Okay. And then I can bring in my seal adhesive. And we will add that to the front here. So let me ah, get that right where I want it to be. There we go. And this is a really super, super simple pocket card too. And then I have some of this ribbon. I have, it's the cotton ribbon combo pack. I gotta get the other one. So we've got the Misty Moonlight and the Petal Pink. You get both colors in here. I'm gonna use the Misty Moonlight. And while I'm talking about Misty Moonlight, let me just tell you guys, um, in case you're not worth thinking about it or not aware, um, our in colors from last year, two years ago, the Misty Moonlight, the Just Jade, Cinnamon Cider, Bumblebee, and the Magenta Madness are all going to be retiring at the end of April when the new catalog starts. So um, as all in colors do, they're here for two years and then they're gone. So if you are not stocked up on your favorite card stock, uh, my favorite card stocks would probably be Bumblebee, Misty Moonlight, and Just Jade, you might want to order them now. Um, in the event that they sell out and Stampin' Up! cannot get any more. Uh, that does happen every year. Something in the ink color collections always sell out, whether it's the ink refills, the pads, the markers, the cardstock, whatever it may be. It seems like something always sells out um, in one of the colors, and uh, then people are left sad because they didn't get what they wanted. So don't let that be you. Go ahead and get that taken care of for yourself. Um, right now is the best time to do that at Celebration. So uh, why wouldn't you uh, order stuff and get free stuff? So there you go. Little reminder. Okay. So I am going to uh, use a glue dot on the end of this ribbon here because I'm going to wrap. This is how I'm going to close. Um, this is how I'm going to close my pocket. I'm going to put a glue dot on my ribbon right there. 
and then I'm going to wrap it around the back and bring it to the front. And then we're going to add another glue dot here in just a second after I get it um, where I want it to be. And then I snip off some of it. Now I'm going to have a circle here that's going to cover this up. So I don't need to have um, them necessarily meet in the middle. So I can be a little bit cheap and save a tiny bit of ribbon by just having that meet right here. And so I'm going to use my fingernail to kind of really press that ribbon into the glue dot so that it doesn't want to come off. Okay, so now we've created our cute little pocket, uh, but we haven't had to use adhesive, so that's always fun. Okay, so then I have a circle from the Layering Circles dies. This is number seven. Now, if you guys have heard me talk about this before, I have my straight, I call them straight circles, on this side of my package. All my scallops on this side, and I have them numbered. So the smallest one in my straight circles is number one goes all the way up to number eight. So this is number seven. This is the second largest regular circle in the collection. And so I've cropped one of those out. And so I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping on this. Okay, so I've got three colors here. I've got mango, uh, the magenta madness, the mango and the Bermuda Bay. And I'm gonna start with the Bermuda Bay. Um, where is my, here it is. I need a scratch paper. And I like to use these little six by six papers here. They have grids on them. They're kind of designed for our Stamparatus, but honestly, you don't have to use them with the Stamparatus. You can use them for whatever you want. And I'm gonna use them for this. And I'm going to ink that up. And then I'm gonna stamp it off one time because it is a little bit too dark for what I wanted to do with it. So I'm gonna stamp that here. There we go. And then I also have the little set of words that says what? Sending you a rainbow of happiness. And so I'm gonna ink that up also in Bermuda Bay, but this time I am not, um, oh, you know what, I should've done that the other way. Let me start over. I'm gonna stamp this first. There we go. So that was full strength. And then I'm gonna come back with this one. I'm gonna stamp it off again. And now I'm going to stamp it over my words because I can see through the words now. That's what I wanted to do. And before it was not going to work. So there you go. Okay, perfect. So the words are darker than the rainbow, which is good. Then I need the magenta madness for the next size rainbow, which is this little guy right here. So let me, I think I just stuck my finger in that. Yes, I did. All right, well, I'm going to have to bring my chamois in here, and I'm going to have to get my finger. Oh, Lisa says she's excited I'm using this because she just bought it. Yay! It's so cute. Okay, i got to get that off my finger, or we all know what's going to happen. It's going to end up all over my project. Okay, now I'm going to bring in my Mango Melody. Now, I've got a little tip for you guys. If you have a Mango Melody pad, and it is a little bit weird, let's just say that, um, because there's something with the red tones in some of the inks that can make them kind of weird. And I had been noticing this about my pad. It had this kind of weird surface that wouldn't take ink and it looked kind of slick and smooth. I don't know what it is. There's some kind of a chemical reaction that happens with the ink and it starts to like separate. It can also cause crystals to form on your pad. People sometimes think it's mold. It's not, it's a chemical reaction. And I heard from another demonstrator how she kind of fixed, quote unquote, that problem was she rinsed all the ink out of her pad and re-inked it. So that's exactly what I did. Last weekend, I rinsed my entire pad completely out and then I let it dry overnight um, on a paper towel. I don't know if you have to let it dry overnight or if you can re-ink it right away. I let it dry um, and then I re-inked it and I am so thrilled with how it stamps now. Um, but I, I'm just thrilled. It was so kind of weird. It wouldn't stamp good. It always had a weird kind of sloppy, I don't even know how to explain it, but I, I hated it. And so I am super excited about this. I also did it to my Mossy Meadow pad Tuesday and I re-inked it. And actually I haven't used it yet. So um, I'm hoping that it's also as delightfully fixed as this one. So um that's, that's, that's a trick for you guys. Um, if you have that issue with any of your pads, like I said, for me, it was Mango Melody and Mossy Meadow that kind of did that weird thing. 
I think it also might depend where you live. Um, I'm in the basement of my house and the climate here is, it's not hot, it's not humid, um, especially not in my basement. So like probably about 60 some degrees here year round. So um, I guess it depends if you live like in Florida where it's super humid, you might have a different reaction with some other colors. I don't know, but that worked so good for me, you guys. So if you have a problem ink pad, I highly recommend doing that. Just run it under the sink until it pretty much runs clear. Dab it out with a paper towel. I let mine dry. I don't know if you have to. I think if you dabbed most of the wetness out of it with the paper towel, you could probably re-ink it right away. Um, I don't know. But so anyway, that is what I did. And I am thrilled with the results. So there you go. Okay. Um, so we have this. So then I also decided I wanted to use, I just got these dies. These are the Give It A Whirl dies. And there are some super, I didn't really buy this to make those cards that go around and you can see like viewfinder or whatever. That's not why I bought this. I bought this because look at this. It's got this amazing scallop that has a stitching line on the inside. So cute. It has four hearts that have stitching on them. Super cute. It's got this circle. It's got a rectangle. It's got this thing here. It's got three stitched clouds. Oh my gosh. This and all these stars amazing so like i said i didn't necessarily buy it to be able to do viewfinder cards i bought it because of all the amazing things that are in here and now this is a gigantic scallop of course it's going to cut a hole in the middle but you could always cut a giant scallop and then maybe the number eight circle might fit i don't know you could use half of it or something but that's really the reason i bought these dies was because of this because of all the fun things so because of that i went ahead and cut some hearts so I have two of the hearts. I've got this one and this one. Look at those stitching lines. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. How cute that is. Then I also used the rainbow dies and cut myself some clouds out of that uh, supple shimmer paper. So one of the sheets, they're 12 by 12 normally. I've just cut these to six by six so that you can see them in the, in the, uh, in the frame. So I've got the pinkish colored one and then this one is kind blue green mother of pearl kind of color which is so fun and i love it with this paper and so i did cut myself some clouds and then i got heart and i think i'm gonna also add a little bit of fun down here at the bottom so let me clean these off so i'm gonna have to do some different color combinations because i don't want the biggest rainbow i want to use the small one. Oh wait, I'm already using the small one. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I didn't really need to clean that off. So let's start again here. We are going to do the same thing we did on the front on the circle, but we're going to do it on the inside here. All right, I see some comments coming in. Yes, Heather, it does to me too. All right, didn't know you could rinse them out. Yes, you can rinse them out, Lisa. It's an amazing tip. Yep. And Cheryl says she went to use her poppy parade and can see the sheen more. Certainly. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a sheen that gets on there. And it's just a chemical reaction. It doesn't mean your pads are moldy. There's nothing. It's just, there's nothing you can do. It's chemistry. That's just how chemistry works. Things just, that's how they happen. And unfortunately, um, you know, people are thinking it's icky and there's something wrong with the pads. But, and honestly, you know, ink refills are not that expensive. They're $3.75, and I really didn't use that much. I've used more ink trying to ink up this pad. Whoops, that's, I think it's kind of juicy there. You know what I might do? Let's try this, because I just re-inked it here a couple days ago, so it is kind of juicy. I'm going to kind of spread some of that ink around with my knife here, and then I'm going to ink this up again, where it's not quite so inky, and that will probably give me a little bit better impression. Perfect. Um, no, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, I didn't use that much ink. I was honestly quite impressed uh, that it didn't take a ton of ink. Now I need to put this knife somewhere where I don't get ink all over everything. Okay, so we've got that done on the inside. Boy, this card's taking a long time because I'm doing a lot of blah, 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 blah. Sorry, you guys. But sometimes I get excited when I have good information to share. I want to let you guys know about that because... Um, I thought it was an amazing tip to be able to get that sheen off of my pads. And now I'm super happy because I love the color Mango Melody, but I hated using it 
because I couldn't ever get a nice impression because of that sheen that was on there. And now I can use it and I'm so happy. Okay. So I have these little hearts. This little guy, I think I'm going to sit right in the middle there of my inside. So let me just add a tiny little bit of glue here. And I'm going to add that one right in the middle. Let's see. Dolly wants to know, is that paper in the new caddy or the annual one? I don't know what paper you're talking about, Dolly. Are you talking about this paper, this rainbow paper? If you're talking about the rainbow paper, it is a celebration item. So I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. Okay, and then I have this larger heart that I'm actually going to add to the front rainbow with a dimensional. Pam says she needs all my tips. Ah, oh, that's good to hear, Barb, honestly. Then it makes me happy because I'm giving you guys good information. I don't want to, like, be sharing boring, stupid stuff that nobody cares about. You know what I'm saying. No, the shimmer paper. Oh, it's all. this is also in the mini catalog, Dolly. Um, it's If you look in the very back where all the um, accessories are shown, like the ends and the embellishments, you'll find it back there. I can't remember what collection it's with, uh, but it, 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 excuse me, but it's in there. Okay, so we're going to put that down in there. We're going to move this out of the way. This is going to go here because it's so cute. And I need, where are those things? I've got... Oh, here we go. They were in another bucket. I'm looking for my iridescent rhinestones because I can't, I literally can't create stuff without these. These are just amazing. And so I want to stick that right here on my heart. Okay, and then I'm going to add my heart to the front of my card, but I'm only going to put adhesive at the bottom because I don't want it to, of course, stick to that. So I am just going to bring my seal in here and only do a little less than half. Okay, so then I'm going to try to get this lined up, kind of so it looks straight-ish, I guess, like that. And then the last thing I want to do is add some clouds. So this one I'm going to add with glue, and I'm just going to stick it right up here on the top of my little pocket piece here. And then these little guys, I'm just going to add kind of wherever down here. Oops, come back here, you little cloud. I am really having a lot of fun with these little clouds in this with this paper. I did it on that card that I shared with you guys last week, too. I used these same little clouds because they're amazing. This paper just makes the most amazing clouds. Okay, so there it is. So cute. Oh, thank you. Kathy said the shimmer paper is on page 67 of the mini catalog. Thank you very much. Okay, so there is our card. And then you have, of course, spots so you can write some fun information on there for people. There it is. Oh, you know what else we could do? We could add a little sentiment right here because there's sentiments in here. So this says, sending you a rainbow of happiness. And then I'm going to stamp in this a little something to brighten your day. Okay, hold on here. And I'm going to do that, I think, in Misty Moonlight. So let's ink that up. And we will stamp that right here next to our rainbow. Hope it's straight. That's pretty straight if it's not. Okay. So there we have card number one, a cute little pocket card. Thank you guys for the love on that. I appreciate it so much. Let me get all this stuff put back into the bucket so that we can move on to our next card. And good Lord, look at all this stuff I have out here. It's a lot. Um, I'm going to clean. I think I cleaned off my rainbows already. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. This is the time when you guys give me the thumbs up. Just saying. If you, if you haven't already, that'd be awesome if you would. Okay. Um, let me... Still putting stuff away. Good grief. You know me. I do not like stamping in a mess. I just can't handle it. Okay, so let's put this card aside and we will bring in the stuff for our next project, which is going to be a card using, well, I'm not really using the Daffodil Daydream. I might just be using this piece, but I'm going to use the Special Moments piece um, stamp set 
for my sentiment. This comes out of the Celebration brochure. It is free with a $100 order. So if you place a $100 order in my online store, you can choose this stamp set for free. And look at all those sentiments. I mean, there's just a ton. We've got some over here, some over here. How many are there? 21. So that's a pretty substantial stamp set uh, that you can get for free. We are gonna be using the daffodil dies and the scalloped contour dies, excuse me. And we're gonna be using this brand new paper that I told you about at the beginning of the show called, can't remember. It's part of the All Together collection that starts February 1st. And the paper is called, oh, the All Together 6x6 Designer Series paper. So it is all black and white. Oh my gosh, I am just the biggest fan of black and white paper. I love it. And so I'm gonna show you the patterns. So like these two are double-sided. So these are the two patterns on this piece here. And then we have these two here, stripes and kind of sunshines, I guess. This one we've got hearts and what looks kind of like some um, canvas circles, I guess, in a sense, kind of fun. We've got this. So again, these are double-sided. So this is the back side of that one. I'm just gonna kind of show them to you as doubles so it's easier to see them. Uh, we have these fun leaves and then this nice grid pattern here. These two. So that's a 48 sheet package. It is $11.50. And yeah, the patterns are super fun. We do have a few of the patterns that coordinate with the stamp set and the dies that are in the bundles, which are kind of fun, which of course would uh, lend themselves to be colored with the brand new blends, which would be amazing. Uh, then we have this fun leaf pattern and this, I love this diagonal stripe. I'm actually going to be using this one today. And then we have these. So awesome. I just love black and white so, so much. This would look awesome if you like used a blending brush and, you know, added some color because then it could be black and pink or black and blue, black and purple, black and whatever. Um, this, you could color these leaves granny apple green. So fun. Um, another one of those hand pieces, and then this kind of, I don't know what this is. It looks like Morse code or something like that to me. So anyway, those are the patterns in the package. Again, it'll be available February 1st, still for celebration. So you could purchase the collection of stuff and get celebration rewards with that. All right, so let me bring out my pieces here. I've die cut myself some of the stems. And then I have, I've decided to use these two patterns in the designer series paper, the diagonal stripe. And then this, this kind of reminds me of suns, like half suns. I don't know if that's what they're supposed to be. I don't know if there's a word for this design. I'm going to call it the half suns. So there you go. I also have a piece of white that I cropped with one of the scallop contours dies. The, I think it's the second largest one in the back there. And then I also have a bunch of these daffodils. And I'm going to show you how to put these together. So I cut everything out of balmy blue and granny apple green. Okay. So first of all, what I want to do is show you the easy peasy assembly of these dies. So to make a regular daffodil, you need two of these, two of these, one of these, and one of these. And then to make the like single daffodil, you need this and this, these two things, and then these two again. And what's really awesome about these dies is you get two of these in the set, two of these, two of these, two of these. I think you only get one of these. Where is my set? Let's just pull it out and find out. I can't remember now, and I just did it today. Ugh, old people. Okay, so there's that. Here's all the stems. So here's the two for this, and the two for that, and then one for those, and those, and these singles for that centerpiece. And yes, okay, it is just one. But you only need one of each to make, to make the flower, so that's why there's only one of this particular these and then there's two of these so to make them it really is easy you can just throw like a half a sheet of card stock probably not even that much um, onto your stamp and cut and emboss machine throw all the dies on and you can then make what we're going to make right now and then I did uh, whoops die cut a bunch of different stems you can see we have a stem that points 
to the left, one that points to the right, and then we have the extra leaves, same thing, one points to the left, one points to the right. So it just is a lot of uh, fun pieces to help you make a lot of fun things. There's also two butterflies and a butterfly body and a little tiny flower. And then of course the dies that crop out the images in the stamp set. So you have a die for this and a die for this. And then I, this, one of the dies does do that little butterfly. So it's a really, really interesting set. So to put these together, what I like to do, not all the time, but um, you could do different colors. So you could cut this in a color and this in a color. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to use one color, I can show you how to make another tone of that color, okay? So I've taken all the overlay pieces and I've got a light balmy blue marker here, Stampin' Blend, and I'm just gonna color all of these pieces with this Stampin' Blend marker. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me another shade of this card, or this stock, to add over the top of the ones that I've already got die cut up there. So I, I should have done some of these earlier. In fact, I might have, I might have something done over on my other table, but it won't take that long. Then you can actually see how long it takes. And it literally does not take that long. So what should we talk about while I'm coloring? Uh, we've talked about the weather. We've talked a little bit about some TV. I don't know if there's any other shows that you guys are recommending. I've heard Ozark is really good. My husband's kind of needing something to watch. He's working nights right now, and when he works nights on his days off, he still has to stay up late uh, because, you know, otherwise his sleep schedule will be really messed up if he tries to, you know, go to bed at the normal time um, on his days off as opposed to when he's working and he has to stay up till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and so he's always looking for some TV shows to watch. He loves military type things, and so I did just see a new show on Netflix called World War II something something I can't remember but there's 10 shows 10 episodes so he should you know that should help him for like two days because <laughs> I usually go to bed um around like 10 you know because I try to keep a normal sleeping schedule so if I go to bed at 10 um then I get up at, you know, five or six or something like that to get my kid ready for school. Not that he takes a lot of time, but I usually try to work a little bit in the morning um, before, you know, before people are getting out of bed and wanting stuff from me. You know how that is as mom. People want stuff from you all the time. Can't you people take care of yourselves? But then, you know, I'd probably be bored if I had them taking care of themselves all the time. What would I do? Okay. So I've got all those pieces done now. So we all, we, we learned all about my, let's see, the Kaminsky method with Michael Douglas is really funny. Oh, Frenzy, I may have to check that out. Okay. Through the stripes embossing folder for some dimension. Oh, perfect. Okay. So as you can see, now when I add this to, it's just a tiny bit darker. So there's just a little bit of contrast there. So it doesn't look exactly the same color. And I just find that to be really cool. And you can do that with lots of different colors as long as you have, um, you know, the blend that matches or whatever. And I always forget how these go together. Oops, that's not it. It's this one right here. Nope, I'm wrong again. It's this one. Just keep turning them around until they fit and then you'll, they'll, they'll eventually fit. Okay, so I'm just going to add all these pieces here. And then we'll have, whoops, that was upside down. Just a little bit of different color for all of these things, which is pretty cool, I think. All right, finishing up. Oh, Lucifer, my daughter was really into that Lucifer. I don't think my husband would like that. He's not really into, like, the underworld or witchcraft or, um, you know, ghosts, things like that. He's not into any of that. He's into crime shows and military type shows that's the kind of stuff he likes so yes even though i think i would like lucifer i'm pretty sure he would not 
we also tried to get him to watch Santa Clarita Diet, and he could not handle that at all, which was really too bad because the show is so funny. I mean, I get that she's a zombie and she eats people, and it's kind of gross. I get it. But, man, if you can get past that, holy cow, that's a funny show. Too bad Netflix left us hanging. Um, jerks. Anyway, okay, so now I have all my pieces put together. So we're going to put those aside over with our stems. And I guess I could show you. You can, you can totally see there's just enough of a color variation that it doesn't look like it's the exact same color. So if you have blends, definitely try that. Definitely practice that. It's kind of a fun thing to do. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this striped piece, and I'm going to color this with my blends again. I am going to use the dark granny apple green and the dark balmy blue, and I'm going to color like, oh, I'll show you. I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to color, this one is going to be blue. That's going to be green, then white. So this is going to be blue, and we're going to go all the way down. Now, these are the dark ones. So one, two, I don't want to get my count off and mess it all up. And then I did it with the light ones. And then you guys can see the difference of, you know, how the light blends look or if the dark blends look better. So we'll kind of take a vote after I'm done here. So again, I probably should have done all this before I went live, but I was having printer problems. My dumb printer was giving me serious fits. And I was trying to print some stuff and it was just, nope, nope, sorry, no printing for you. Kind of like the soup Nazi, but the printer Nazi. Oh, I shouldn't say that. That's not very nice. But anyway, if you guys have ever seen Seinfeld, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So one, two, three. So yeah, I didn't get some of this. I like to do some of the prep work before I actually go live because I know sometimes it's kind of boring to watch people color things or cut things or whatever. And I'm sorry. I really wanted to. But technology was not my friend today. Not my friend at all. Okay, we are getting close to the end here. So that's the blue. Now we're gonna go with the green, which is gonna be right after the blue. I can already tell this is kind of dark. Um, I'm gonna prefer the light, I can tell you right now, myself. But I decided to do both just in case. You know, you never know what something's gonna look like till you actually do it. Um, I kind of thought that I wouldn't like it as well, just because it is going to be so dark, but yeah. And I think I'm wiggling the phone, the camera, so I apologize for that too. Boy, I just got a lot of things to be sorry for right now. However, I haven't cursed yet, so you're welcome. I've had a little cursing problem the last couple of weeks. Nothing bad, mind you. So I don't want you to think I'm a horrible person or whatever, but there is a word or two that I do like to use occasionally when things are not going my way. So there you go. Okay, we are just about to the end and I just screwed that up, but I'm not gonna use this anyway because I don't like it as well. Okay, so there's the darks. So that's done with the dark balmy blue and the dark um, granny apple green. And then I have one that I did with the light. And I like the lighter so much. Yeah, Francie says there's still time for me to curse. Don't say that because I just might. <laughs> oh, man. So anyways, I don't know how you guys feel, but I like the lighter one better than the darker one. Because, of course, this is the flowers that we're going to be using with it. And I just feel like the lighter is just a little bit better. So I'm going to go with the light. So now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to add my little strip here to the other side. And look at, actually, look at this. Look how cool that is. You could just do that and use this side for something, which I think I'm going to because that looks pretty dang cool, honestly. Yeah, fruit stripe gum. Totally, Debbie. Ooh, Kathleen says her hubby just brought her a margarita. Oh, you lucky, lucky woman, you. Okay, there we go. All right, so anyways, this side looks pretty cool too. So you could totally do this on one side and then use the other side instead. So there you go. This one isn't quite as cool. So I mean, if you wanted to do the dark or the back side, ugh, I can't pick it up, I have no nails. Uh, do the darks and then use the lights for the front. Okay, let's get some seal on this piece. And there we go. 
Oh my, that's going to need some, some fixing. All right, so right at the edge of my designer series paper. So my uh, big piece of designer series paper is four by five and a quarter. And then my small piece is one and a quarter by five and a quarter. Okay. All right, there we have that. And actually I've got a tiny, mm, I think it's probably fine. Okay, so then this is going to go on the front like that. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Where is my silicone mat? I just learned this little trick that when your seal gets to the point where, you know, you've kind of, like I just did, I pulled a whole string off so then it wasn't going to roll for me very nicely the next time. If you run it on your silicone mat, um, then it starts it again really easily. So silicone mats are an amazing tool to have in your arsenal of crafting supplies. And I have like four of them um, just because I use them all over the place. There we go. All right, and so this guy, this is where we're gonna build our daffodils. So I'm gonna bring in my stems here, pull them all out. So what have I done here? I've got this guy that goes that direction, this one that goes that direction, and then I think I have two or three each of these um, other leaves. So those are all the same, and then these are all the same. One of them's just a little shorter because my piece of paper was shorter, but I don't think I need the whole thing to be long anyway. Okay, so how do I want to do this? I think I want to start out by having one of these kind of off to the side. So I'm just going to add a bit of glue here. And earlier in the show, somebody was talking about how their cutting plates leave marks on their dies. And you can see this one does have marks on the back of it, but it's the back, so I don't care. Um, and I'm going to add this about like so. And then I'm going to bring in my little piece where I'm going to have a daffodil on it. And about, I think like that. Where's my daffodil? I'm going to make sure that I can, it's got to come down even a little farther than that. Okay. And then I think I'm going to have my daffodil there. So that should work. So I'm going to put these two together now. Again, just adding the uh, glue to the middle. So there we have that. And then we're going to add another bit of glue. And we're going to add one of these to the top. And there we have one of our daffodils. And so we're going to set it on there. You know what? I feel like this needs to be... Can I even move that still? I don't know. I don't think I can. So I'm just going to have to cover that up. I didn't really want to do that, but it is what it is. Okay, so we are going to stick that like so. Okay, so then I'm going to bring in one of these other pieces of grass that kind of go the other direction. And this is a shorty, so I'm going to use this one first. And we'll have a little shorty come up from here like that. And then we're going to put this one on. Oh, somebody was wondering if I'm still alive. Yes, I am. Is it really late? Oh, kind of late, but that's fine. Okay, so then I'm going to put this one over to the side here, like about so. You see, all these I'm going to have to cut off at the bottom, but it's not a big deal. Okay, and then maybe, I don't know, do I want this piece to come in? I think maybe I do. All right. And of course, daffodils aren't blue, but you know what? Who cares? We can do whatever we want, right? If we want our daffodil to be blue, it can be blue. If we want it to be purple, it can be purple. If we want it to be its real color, which I think is yellowy or something, it can be yellowy. So we can do whatever we want. All right. So then we're going to add this little thing to the back. I don't think it really even takes that long to put these together. Honestly, I, I don't, it's not bothering me at all. All right, so I'll stick that on. Oops, it stuck on my finger. Okay. And then I'm going to snip off some of these down here at the bottom. Actually, we may go some more. I wonder if I could actually... 
We can try to mimic the scallop. This may or may not work. I didn't think this all the way through. <laughs> this afternoon when I was designing the card, normally when I'm designing the card, I will just kind of like lay everything on it, you know, and see if I like how it looks, but I don't actually put the whole thing together. So I uh, wasn't exactly sure how it was going to look. And that is not wanting to come off. Why not? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you giving me fits? I already had trouble with my printer today, it's a stupid thing. Okay, so then this is gonna go here. Then, before I forget, I wanted to bring in this sentiment stamp set, and I need to pick a sentiment that's gonna kinda fit right down in here. And I don't know which one that's gonna be. Um, how about just a little high from me? That's perfect, now I gotta find it. Um, is it over here? No, I think it's got to be over here. What does it look like again? Just a little high from me. Okay. Oh, I think it might. Is it this one? <laughs> yes! Okay, yay, found it! Silicone mat. Now I need a block. And I am really hopeful, you guys. I have no insider information. It's just a hope that Stampin' Up! is going to come out with blocks that have grids on them. Because they used to sell these grids that I have on some of my blocks um, many years ago. They're like window clings. And I got addicted to using them. And I can't not now. So a lot of you ask me where I got them. Unfortunately, I got them from Stampin' Up! a number of years ago. And they're no longer available. And I'm sorry. I hate using things that you guys can't purchase. I know it's frustrating. But... I can't, I can't work without them. So that's just how it's got to be. Okay, we're going to add this with dimensionals. So I'm going to use five. And I have no nails, but these dimensional backings come off so easily. Okay, so I want this to be about like this. Wait, wait, no, don't stick yet. It's kind of crooked. I think that's better okay then I have some butterflies that I wanted to add on there because why wouldn't a brass butterfly look amazing it totally would and then I also have some of this twine and this is the essentials Baker's twine essentials pack and I have some excess black here that I used for something else and so I'm gonna try this I'm gonna try to tie a bow and then I'm I thought I would maybe stick it I don't know, that might be too much black, honestly. That might be overkill. Even if I stuck it down here, I think it's going to be, you know, I was actually going to stick it on there, but now that it's on there, I don't know as though I like it. Do you guys think I should do twine or no twine? Uh, leave a comment. Here's, I don't know where I'd even put it, honestly. It's just, no. If I, uh, yeah, Dolly says no twine. Anybody else have an opinion on that? I personally am thinking no twine. Is there a contact paper that has grids on it? Maybe that would stick on the blocks and help. I don't know, Shannon. Oh, Heather says yes. Three of you have said no. Four, five. No's are winning right now. No, yep. Lots of no's. Lots of no's. Tana says no. Yeah, I'm thinking no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not liking that like I thought I was going to. So skip that. But we're going to go butterflies because seriously, why wouldn't we? Okay, where do we want a butterfly? I think we need a butterfly um, right here. I think we definitely need one there. Um, I have one right here on my finger, so we're going to stick that on there. And maybe another one. Maybe like that. Maybe move this one down just a hair. Is it going to come off? Yes. Is that too many butterflies, you guys? Maybe that one shouldn't be right there. Can we get it off? No, I can't. Okay, anyway, I think it looks fine. Then I also have a layer for the inside. So I'm going to add uh, this DSP to the inside of my card. Oh, goodness, my DSP is not long enough. Hold on. <laughs> Not sure if I cut this layer wrong or if I cut the DSP wrong. Oh, it was the layer. 
The layer was very big. Oh, hello. Twine stuck on my seal. Okay, let's add this to the inside. And then I do have one more thing I wanted to do to the envelope because there's that cool stamp um, in the set. This long kind of, I don't know what you call it. Some kind of pattern, whatever it might be, I'm not sure. Okay, hold on, I need an envelope. And then I need a block. Um, wow, that was really loud. Let's try... Um, I don't know where my big huge one is, but I'm going to try, this is not long enough. Oh, where is that? I don't, I'm not using it for anything right now. Um, hmm, boy, this happens to me sometimes. I will uh, have a block. I only have one of those, and so I guess I need to buy another one. Okay, we're going to try to stamp on this flap with this fun border. I don't know how it's gonna work. I think I'm gonna first try to go in the middle, and then if I get it in the middle, then we might go on either side of it, but no guarantees, because I don't know. I should have a bigger block. Eh, we'll see. Actually, I'm gonna fold that up. Okay. And... Wow, that is amazing. I may just leave it. <laughs> Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the two sides to line up. And so I don't think I'm going to. So there it is. Card number two. And you know what you could do? You could put Wink of Stella somewhere on there. That would be amazing. But anyway. Okay. Where's my... I got to clean up my mess now, you guys. You know how I am. I can't stamp in a mess. Well, I mean, I can, but I don't like to. Okay. That's the glue dots. Wrap, <clears throat> excuse me, wrap those up. Hello, Yella. I think that's how we say your name from Australia. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. I'm going to save these stems because, you know, why wouldn't I? Then I won't have to die cut them the next time I want to make a card. And that was Granny Apple Green, in case you did not, in case I didn't say it. Uh, that's what color that was. Okay, so let's move this out of the way now and let's bring in our supplies for our last card, which is this. And we're going to be using the uh, celebration set Friendly Hello, um, which is a set of designer series paper and a stamp set. So they come as a bundle and they are free with a hundred dollar order in the online store. <laughs> Cynthia says she likes how I clean up my mess. I just, I have to, Cynthia. I can't stand, I can't stand like, not that I don't ever do that because when I'm down here creating stuff, it's it's a gigantic mess, I'm not gonna lie. But when I'm live, I just, I don't function well in a mess. So I have to clean it up. Okay, so we're gonna be using this bundle, free with a $100 order. And I do have a special thing for you guys. I have, a bunch of cards that use this bundle that I'm going to share with you here momentarily um, after we make this super cute easy card. Okay, so we are going to use the bird and a sentiment and some black and white gingham ribbon and maybe this piece, I don't know, some memento ink, some petal pink markers, Stampin' Blends, uh, Wink Estella, another stamp, petal pink ink and then here are my papers now i already went ahead and stamped the bird uh just because i'm going to color it in a little bit and sometimes i like to let it dry a bit before i actually color it so now it's definitely dry um i've got a little piece of designer so i've got some of the designer series papers what do we got here so i'm using this piece here and this piece here and then I have another card that I did with this one and this one. So I used two different pieces of paper in the package and I used both sides of both pieces. Does that even make sense? I think it does. Okay, so we've got our card base and I'm gonna add my layer of designer series paper. So this is a four by five and a quarter. So let's get this on here. And Morgan says she loves that ribbon. I do too, it's very nice. All right, and let's add this to the bottom of this piece here. Oh, I just pulled a string with my uh, stampin' or my seal here, so 
Then we have to bring in that uh, mat. And I think I have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of paper there on that end that needs to come off. Okay. I've also got a piece for the inside layer. This is the four by five and a quarter. And then this is, um, so this was four by five and a quarter. So this is four by, it must be three quarters uh, because I just cut the bottom off, I think. Or maybe it's four by one. It looks more like an inch to me, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I may have to get the old uh, ruler out. Then we will know for sure. Is it an inch? It is. Okay. It's an inch. And we are going to add this to the inside. I got all these pieces and parts here. We need to get, get them together. All right. So that's going to go on the inside. There we go. I have an envelope that I'm going to put the same paper on. And now somebody asked me one time if I always make coordinating envelopes. And the honest answer is no. Um, I don't make a coordinating envelope for every single card that I send out of here. If I did that, I would never get, I would never be done because um, I send out a lot of cards and I, I can't unfortunately do a decorated envelope every single time. I'd like to. I do a number of them, but I definitely don't do them all. Um, so obviously I'm going to be using these cards. So I'm going to be mailing these out to people. So they are going to get coordinating envelopes. And I did not get that on there right. I think it's because I was talking instead of paying attention to getting it close to the edge. There, hopefully that's better. Okay. And then we just simply trim around. And I swear every single time I cut around here, I end up cutting some of the envelope off. But, you know, oh well. No one's going to notice that. They're just going to say, oh my gosh, this is a beautiful presentation of a card. It's just beautiful. Fabulous. I love it. Okay. So, and when you, I guess a lot of times when I have free designer series paper, I'm a little more generous with using it because it was free and I don't feel like I'm losing out on anything because it was free. So there you go. All right. Bird. We are going to color in its belly and uh, maybe some of these flowers. Uh, and that's going to be about it. It's not going to be a ton of coloring here. Just a little bit. And I think I'm going to start out with the dark for the flowers, um, for the middles. Just kind of, you know, how you add some of the dark to the center. I, I'm not a good colorer. I don't even think that's a word. Uh, but if it is, it's not me. So I just kind of wing it and not super awesome all the time. Okay, so I'm just adding the light now to the outer edges of the petals and hopefully the dark will still look dark. And so we'll have a little bit of contrast there. And you can see, I was just kind of actually really scribbling. I mean, I wasn't really trying to be super careful at all, um, but I will bring a little bit more of that uh, light into his belly. Okay, so that's pretty much all I'm going to do. And now I've got a wink of Stella here, so let me shake it up. And I am going to add just a bit of wink of Stella to the belly here. Just a little bit. I'm going to try not to go outside the line. I'm going to try not to smear the black ink. Just going to add a tiny bit of and then maybe to the inside of this. Eek. Okay, so there we have that. So now while that's kind of drying a little bit, I'm going to wrap my ribbon, I'm gonna do my ribbon. And I like to wrap my ribbon around something else. As you guys know, I am not good at wrapping ribbon around things and having, uh, having it be nice and tight and without destroying the paper. I, I'm just not good at it. So I take every opportunity that I can to not do that. So I like to tie it around something else. So I'm gonna just tie a bow here. There we go. We're gonna manipulate it and get it to look like we want it to look. The loops, a certain size, blah, blah, all that good stuff. And then we're gonna snip off the end. And so by tying it around a bottle, I now can take the, I can take this and I can snip it in the loop, which I will here in just a second after I get this bow. Uh, the way I want it. 
that's pretty good. I'm going to figure out where I want this to go on my card. I'm going to want it to go about right here. And so I'm going to take that loop and I'm going to kick it out and I'm going to snip off just enough that I can wrap it around with a piece of tape. Because as you guys know, I am, I, I can't wrap ribbon around paper. I, I just can't. I've tried and tried and I stink at it. So I honestly don't even make a card if I have to do that. I will add a layer to the card and then do this because I, I'm not good at that. Okay, so then we're going to get that right above the designer series paper. And look at that. It's nice and tight. Everything's good. The bow is good. The only thing I might do is bring a glue dot in to get that knot uh, where I want it to sit. First of all, though, I might make this just a tiny, tiny bit smaller because I, I don't want it quite that big. Okay, take your pick tool. Let's bring in a glue dot. I'm going to fold it in half just in case it's bigger than my knot is. And then I'm going to stick it right above that designer series paper where I want my knot to be. And I'm going to pick up my knot and I'm going to smash it down on there. What is the white? It's just white. Oh, the, the dimension, Cheryl. It's three by four and a quarter. Sorry, I don't think I said that. And then I have a, so this is three by four and a quarter. So this is like three and an eighth by four and three eighths. Um, to layer that onto it. Yep. Okay. So we're going to add this. Did I even? Yeah, I did. I couldn't see the shine from the adhesive. And I thought, oh, did I even get adhesive on here? <laughs> I did. Okay. So let's add this. Yes. And Pam says that also saves on ribbon if you do that. It, it saves a tiny bit. And it's not even that. I, I wouldn't care about saving the ribbon if I could just do it so it looked nice, which I can't. So there you go, is what it is. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there like me that struggle with that. And so that is a tip that I share every single time I make a card because it really helps me. Look how cute that is. Okay, sorry, I need to find a sentiment. Oh, I have a sentiment. It's the birthday sentiment for the inside. Okay, I know, I know what I'm doing. I thought I didn't, but apparently I did. All right, add some dimensionals. I need two more. There we go. And of course I have those fantastic gems. Thank you so much, Tisha. She just showed up and shared and gave it a thumbs up. I appreciate that so much. There we go. Okay. So then here are some fantastic gems. And I think we're going to add uh, maybe a big and a small and then maybe a medium up here. So then that kind of takes up a little bit more of that white space that I have. And then we have our amazing envelope. And now for the inside, I should have probably done this before it was in the card because now if I mess it up, I'm going to cry. Oh, deep breaths. Okay. We are going to try to center it as best we can and go. That worked out pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, where's the lid to my ink so I don't get my finger stuck in it? Okay, so here I have done the pale or petal pink, right? But check it out. I did one also in the Fresh Freesia. Same layout, same sizes of everything. I just used the different, sta different stamps in the set. So you can see I used the bird obviously on this one. And then I used the Hello Friends sentiment and the flowers on this one. And I just reminded myself, I did want to add one little thing to the front here. Um, so this is a tiny little flower that is also in the set. And I wanted to add it to the front of my envelope. So bear with me here while I do this. There, and then maybe something like that. Cause that's what I, look what I did on this envelope. So I did add the designer series paper on one side and then I added uh, the stamping on the other side and did color that in. And so when you do want to color on an envelope, always put a piece of paper in there. Um, okay, because if you don't, the blends can bleed through if you're using blends. That is if you're using regular markers, it wouldn't make any difference. But if you're using blends, you all, we all know how blends can bleed through to the other side, and they can actually go all the way through the envelope to the back of it. 
because envelope paper is not as thick as cardstock. Um, and of course it does bleed through cardstock too. So just be mindful of that. And if you do want to use blends on an envelope, then just go ahead and um, add a piece of paper inside there so that um, it doesn't bleed through. And I can see that my ink, I'm trying not to get where the black is because it's not totally dry yet. And there. Okay, good enough. Okay. So take your piece of paper out and then it doesn't bleed through. I'm not sure if it even got onto my paper. It did not, but sometimes super dark colors. And if you're using a lot of color, it definitely can. So there are these two cards. These were actually um, inspired by this card that I made for a swap way back in December before Christmas even um, using this bundle. Um, so the layout is the same, the same sizes of papers and everything, except I used an embossed layer here rather than um, the designer series paper. Um, but I used the same gems and everything. Um, and so, yeah, so today I thought I would do this with the designer series paper because the papers are super cute. And yeah, so let me bring in the rest of the projects make some room here. I should clean, but that takes too long. Okay, so we've got those two. Then we have our amazing daffodil card where I did get that fantastic border stamp right on there. Pretty fancy. Um, and then we have our rainbow card, our pocket card. Isn't that fun? With the supple shimmer um, die cut clouds. I just love that paper. I love the supple shimmer. This this color of it with the rainbow, Sunshine and Rainbows Designer Series paper from Celebration. It's amazing. Um, another little quick shout out for you guys. If you are interested in becoming a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and saving money on your products, I would love to have you join my team of demonstrators. We have, like I said before, team meetings, card challenges, prizes, random gifts. You get a free basic subscription to Stamp Happy Academy after you've placed your first order as a demonstrator on my team. So there's so many perks to being a demonstrator. And if you can't meet the quarterly minimums, nothing happens to you. You don't give anything back. You're simply dropped as a demonstrator and you could sign up again later if you wanted to. So keep that in mind. I would love to have you join my team. The link is in the description. Also be sure to check out my tutorial library. The link is in the description of this video for that. I have a lot of tutorials and I'm adding tons more. I haven't even gotten half of them there. Tisha, you're so sweet. Yes, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel down here and hit that notification bell. Oh my gosh, Vicki, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're not done, you guys. I have cards to show you using this bundle. Oh my gosh, they're right here too. Okay, so we have these two. There it is. Then we have this fun card. Check that out. That's amazing. We've got this one. Yes, I am so glad you said that, Vicki. I was just ready to, to stop the show. But we've got stuff to share with you. All right, we've got this one using some granny apple green and the fresh freesia. And then we've got a little bit of fun on the inside there. This one is pretty colorful using some more of that designer series paper kind of cut to make a puzzle. Yes, Vicki, everyone thank Vicki so much because, yeah, if it wasn't for Vicki, we would not be doing this right now. Okay. Next one, another gorgeous fresh freesia. This one uses that gingham folder um, on the back there. And then, yeah, some more of that fun paper. This one is so pretty. I love Petal Pink and um, Pool Party together. They are so pretty. And then this is just a fantastic card, you guys. Love that. All right, we've got this one. Ooh, I love how the background was stamped with that tiny little flower. So cute. Ooh, and I almost forgot. We do have this other Petal Pink ribbon. Fantastic. Uh, kind of shimmery. Oh, I don't even know what you call it. It's got a name, but I can never remember the names of stuff. So there you go. Uh, then we have this little gem. Super cute. I love that little circle detail with that small flower there. So you guys, this should definitely be on your wish list. And can I just tell you a little secret? Uh, Dina Kelly and I are getting ready to uh, put out the uh, registration information for our um, spring retreat, which is going to be happening at the end of March. Um, but the registration is going to start February 1st. This bundle 
barring any back orders or selling out from Stampin' Up, this is going to be one of your, you're going to get that in your uh, retreat packet is this bundle here. So keep that in mind. All right. We've got this gorgeous one. I love those gems. They sparkle so, so much. So cute. And a lot of these cards, it's just the paper, you know, because the paper is so pretty. It's just amazing. Um, we've got some flowers stamped right here. That's really fun. All right, we've got this pretty one here, again, with that same ribbon zigzagged in the back. This is a fun fold. You can see how fun fold that is. And we've got a nice big rhinestone right there. Petal pink organdy. Thank you very much. Yes, petal pink organdy, because here comes another one using it. <laughs> Some more petal pink organdy. And look at this. How fun is that? A little fun on the front there. And this one also has that little splatter that I was going to use and I didn't, and I probably should have. But we got a little bit of splatter there, which is really pretty. Am I going to put these on my blog? Oh, gosh, Terry, I don't know. Uh, to take a photograph and edit all these would take a long time. I might... I might not, probably not, because it, yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. It would take a long time. If my daughter was here, I would pay her to do it, but she's not, so I don't know if I can. Anyways, here's another one. This just uses the paper. These are the stencils, you can see, using just one color of ink. So how, of course, when you double it up, it's a little bit darker, so that's really fun. Ah, this beautiful one with the greenery dye on the background of this white layer. Love that dye so much. Here's one that uses the new dies. Can't remember what they're called. Whatever this shape is, hexagon. That's what it is. Hexagons. And that's actually this shape, this die is going to be part of our online class next month. The Hello Beautiful bundle is um, our bundle for next month. Yes, you can watch the replay and screenshot the ones you like. Perfect, Vicki. Um, then we have this one. I have so many. Gosh, I don't even know how many there are. I'm going to have to count them. Um, we've got this one here, another fun card with a, like, a fun inside here. These are those hippo dies, hippo and friends dies. That's both of these. That's really fun. Uh, look at this. This is an interesting card. Check this out. This is something I may have to take apart and figure out how to make this and do this on a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live because that's pretty fantastic. And then that's a gift card that goes in there. Super cool. Uh, okay, here's another one that uses just a couple strips of the paper and some background stamping the sentiment and then added a gorgeous gold foil butterfly to that. Ooh, look how beautiful the black ribbon is with that. That's pretty too. It's actually shedding. And then we have the designer service paper there. I think I have like still four more to go. Jeez. Uh, we've got this one and look at, check this out. This is either done with our Simply Scored tool to make those lines uh, or this or trimmer. I'm not sure. I'm I'm leaning towards the Simply Score just because it would be very easy. You could just put your cardstock on there and then just, you know, follow the grid um, to make that fun background there. So that's a lot of fun. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. This one. Uh, this one uses very vanilla as a card base. This is an interesting color combination. I'm not exactly sure that I would do that, but I think it's pretty. Uh, next we have, is this a fun fold? No, but we do have, of course, just a, you guys, and just a tiny strip of designer series paper on the inside of the card is fantastic. It just adds so much to your card. Uh, just adding that tiny little piece to the inside there. All right. And this is the last one. So cool. I think we've pretty much got all the patterns of paper. Oh, and then here's my other one that I did as a swap. So... Wow, I'm going to have to count these. There's got to be 25 maybe of these cards. I'm not sure, but I'm going to count them. And I will, I'll see what I can do, Terry. Um, it's pretty unlikely that's not going to happen. But thank you guys again for sticking around and seeing all these amazing cards. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed sharing them with you. And thank you again to Vicki for reminding me because remember, you guys, I'm old. I mean, I'm not that old, but I feel old sometimes. And the memory is just not like it used to be. I'm telling you. So anyway, okay, that's it. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Please share. Please tell your friends. Please make all the comments. I'll try to go back and um, check them all out. And I will see you guys back here next week, Thursday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube on my Barb Stamps channel. So thanks again, you guys. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.